This is a talk with Newton L. Haney of Elmer on February the 6th, 1987. Let's see her Let's keep watching for Cindy. She's going to take off work. I think she stayed that long up there. She may not be able to get off. I told her I was going to go up this morning. I don't know why I would. Yeah, really, I wish we could have got a hold of her. There's no reason for her to take off and go up there. Well, she would have taken off anyway. She just. I told her I was going to go up there this morning so there'd be somebody there when she got out. She was asleep when I was up there. <coughs> she come out. She did, they said they didn't put her under the lip. I think they give one and don't give her shit shots like I remember getting it. They give you a shot and don't give shit about nothing. Yeah, that could be. Well, I uh, think. Well, talking to Cindy the other night, they didn't want to put her clear under. They didn't know where she could stand it. No, they, they said they were going to put her under this, or give her very small amounts in the morning. That's why they started her at 1 mm -hmm. o'clock, I think. Yeah. And they bring her up real slow. So you can remember that book, huh? Oh, yeah. You know, it says a lot of it, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's my handwriting. That's your handwriting, huh? Well, that has to be one that the Peyton's borrowed. Yeah. He's left in that. It. Yep, sure is. <laughs> no guns, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, I, I've, I've got a lot of books in the other room. A lot of books on medical and surgical work. And yeah. Physical diagnosis of diseases and surgical diagnosis and uh, hell, everything in the book on medicine. You know, studied a lot of them a lot. Used to, my ambition was that I don't want to be a doctor at one time, but of course, hell, that would be impossible to have the money for long. Yeah, that's right. That's what I wanted to be. But, uh, see it, well, I don't think it will ever happen, but mainly because of the, the easy transportation that everybody's got. If there was a store in Alma that was selling something for 10 cents more than Kirksville, people would drive to Kirksville and buy it. Oh, well, that's right, too. Yeah. Yeah. You and you ain't got enough people now to no. maintain one. But you noticed, I've noticed, that I've been, there's more people come back in these areas like this. You always see somebody coming through, I don't know if they're going towards Edward or out in the woods or somewhere. There's always somebody moving up in this area. I'll Whether tell you where you can get things pretty reasonable now. I don't know whether you've ever stopped there or not. It's out on three. Is that Amish store down there? Yeah. Well, I haven't stopped and haven't been there yet. And one thing goes down there. there. Yeah, pretty they, reasonable. Uh-huh. Yeah, they take some spices and peppers and well, everything. Yeah. Uh, staple goods and everything else, and that's going to get bigger as time goes on. Yeah. Bontrager, I think is his name, he used to be over there about five miles west of Plato and South, yeah. down in there. I know where he lived, yeah. And then there's another Bontrager has got a store up at somewhere up this way. Green City? Or? It's not the one at Rutledge, is it? Huh? Rutledge? That's well, there's one at Rutledge, yeah. Rutledge. I know. They got one over there. And then they've got another one up this way. Yeah, up Green City, I've seen Edward. I believe it is. I think yeah, I've read the advertisement. Yeah, somewhere you see it every once in a while. And I think this guy, he's a bond charger, but he's went broke. And I think they kind of look out for one another. Yeah. And they've set him up in business here. I'm going to trade with him if he'll, uh, if he'll sell somewhere just within common sense of anywhere else or trade mm -hmm. with him if he carries a lot of stock I buy yeah. quite a bit of stuff and what's that hurt he got a new house there you know yeah. but I've heard his prices what he sells is, yeah. is cheap yeah 
That store at uh, Rutledge does a big business. Yeah, yeah. well, I've heard that they're gonna. They're, we like Rutledge clothes and stuff. They're there kind of clothes. There? Yeah. yeah, once I've been over there once. I haven't made it back here since, but I've been over there once. Well, but that's what I hear. He's going to be like that after a while. Yeah, I have sure. their type clothes and stuff. But him and blue jean jacket prices are cheap. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought you'd be interested in this old paper. Uh, sure was, I sure was. I, I, I just run this off on the state's Xerox machine down there, mm -hmm. and uh, and I've had this whole paper laminated in plastic, the whole sheets of it. Mm -hmm. And if I can, I know the guy that runs the machine down there at the highway department. If I can get him to run me off a copy of it, I'll give you a copy of the whole right. damn paper. Well, that'll be fine. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I got a lot of good out of it. <laughs> See a little, uh, little price cutting going on here The Paxton, Billy Paxton says, some people cut prices and I cut whiskers. That must have been a Grandpa Johnson who cut his prices here to get more business. Yeah, could have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a... Uh... Where did uh, I notice this Sam Griffith? He shows up quite a bit. Sam Griffith? Where did he live? Well, sir, you know where R.A. Frank's place is? Yeah. He lived east on that road, the first house north, a major graveyard. That's back over there where Earl Lemons used to live. No, uh -huh. Earl Lemons lives south. Oh. He lives east of the Henry Carter place, Earl Lemons does. Yeah, okay. Sam Griffith, and he married Rose Agee, Lanny Agee's sister. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles Neat, he's the one that lived up there on the... Uh, Gifford Road. On the Gifford Road, yeah. yeah right right on, on the corner there. That's right, across from Hugo Conley Place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, old Sam Griffith, he... He used to be kind of a... Half-assed game warden. He was? Yeah. Do you remember where Wesley Cavender lived? Uh -huh. Go to Ari Francis' place down here off yeah. East. Go east, and right here is Shirley Graveyard. Well, the road goes north up there, the first house. That's the Sam Griffith place. Oh. Mm -hmm. Where he lived when I was a boy was still living there when I left uh, and he he's a brother in law to Bandy Agee, married Rose 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 Agee. Rose Rose Rose. We, he, uh, yeah, uh, Bandy Agee married his sister. I'll get right at him. Well, mm -hmm. That's often Bill Agee's mother. Yeah. We was talking last time I was over here about who was one of the universal preachers. Yes. Red G. E. Cunningham. Yeah, that checks in. It's been 1970. Uh, in when? 1907. Cunningham was. It. Well, uh, the Cunningham checks in somewhere, but I don't remember that. But there's another. That was in 1923. Was a minister at the Presbyterian Church. Yeah. Well, and I I'll think it his name was Houghton. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that was well, a Pentecostal. Well, that could be. Have you uh, or have if you got a copy of the uh, 1976? Centennial book that was put out by Elmer? No. It names all the preachers and all the churches. Clearly. I've got a copy, but you know what I've done with it? I loaned it out to my Nora woman by the name of Nora Green. She's uh, my cousin. Mm -hmm. And she lives in Springdale, Arkansas, and her maiden name is Lappin. She's Jack Lappin's daughter, who she is. And she lives in Springdale. Yeah. And she wanted it, and I told her that I'd loan it, but she never did send it back. No, today. I'm going to write her one of these days. You've got a rough time with books, don't you? I'm going to quit putting out. That's right. You know, make a man feel that yeah, way, but right. a man hates to, if somebody wants to borrow something, he hates to refuse it. You yeah. know, if you got it. But it, it looks like they'd return them. I had another book. Blown out. Clay's got his. Clay Frank. 
destroy the nature of the book because no. I ain't got the book real good. You ought to read that. You ought to, you ought to order it. It ain't going to be half, so bring in half of it. Uh, so on evolution and creation. Mm -hmm. There's a pamphlet on it. Now there's a book that everybody should read. I say everybody, I mean everybody should read that. It ain't but two nine five, two and a half. Mm -hmm. And you can order it from the Watchtower Society track all the, up in New York, two and a half. And I've got that book, and uh, I got it off of Land West at Macon. He's a Jehovah's minister down there. Yeah. And boy, it's sure a good book. It'll put you next to what happened here in the beginning, the history. And of course, it's backed up with the Bible. A lot of people claim now we come on earth by evolution. We didn't. We came by creation, and the book was trying to back it up that we didn't. Mm -hmm. was created, but it's, it's questionable sometimes. You begin to wonder, you know, mm -hmm. the book itself. Yeah. But that's, that's the book that everybody should read. I, you know, I was reading an article in the paper well, it's been less than two weeks ago. Said what they've determined now by genetic studies, genetic studies of the genes in your body, that everybody is descended from black people. Yeah. It I've started that. out in Central Africa. I've heard that before. Yeah. And over millions of years, as they moved north in Europe, their skins finally became white. Uh -huh. But the original color of all man was black. Yeah. It took a million years for the... It had something to do with the sun, the amount of exposure they had to the sun. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I believe I read something I've on that. I've heard about that before. I, yes, I believe I read something on similar to that or yeah. was that. That's quite a while ago, though, and it'll probably come to yeah. me. Yeah. But they said that because of, of uh, constant exposure to the sun in uh, Central Africa, that the original people were black. And as they moved farther north to where they only had sun... Oh, spit? No, I spit. Name. I swallowed. Oh. oh, go ahead there. I'm following. Well, because they, as they moved farther north, they were less exposed to the sun. And this mm -hmm. took millions of years, but their skin finally turned white. Yeah. I was, uh... uh you know, Frida down here one time, she was talking to the different races and so forth and so forth. And she said, my people are all Caucasian people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said, what did you say, Frida? Um, and she'd said that several times. She didn't know what she's saying, what the word Caucasian means, see. Yeah. So she, I said, do you know who the Caucasian people are? I know. Well, I said, they're the so-called white people of Africa. I said, the Caucasian race. And I said, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I said, why don't you go get your dictionary and look it up and see what it says. Yeah. And that's what they are. There's nothing wrong with them, see. Mm -hmm. There's no insult to belong to anybody. God never put one race of people here to persecute the other in any way. Yeah. And we have all one creator. It don't make any difference. If they go to mixed up nationalities in this country and all over the world, they'd have quite a mess, oh, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. Get, it's getting so mixed up that uh, no one can keep track of it and really no one can identify it. Too. Well, and they've lost their identity. Yeah. Nine tenths of people identity. have today. Right. And get back any further than their grandma, they don't know nothing about them. Our grandpa. No, that's just like. I had a cousin, Ruby Nightbone, she lives in Brookfield now, but she traced the Johnson ancestry back to Scotland around the year 1000, damn near 2000 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then she said she found a book that traced it on back farther. Well, hell, they all come from either France or Sweden, one or the other. And the people that was in France 
they had to come from down to Italy or Greece or Turkey or somewhere in there. Because that's, by the time you get back to the year 1000, that's where the people were, down along the Mediterranean. Yeah. So they had to come out of there, and they went to France and Sweden and finally over, over to Scotland and finally over to America. Well, Johnson is a Swedish name. Yeah. You see, it's like uh, all names that end S-O-M. Yeah. Carlson, mm -hmm. Johnson. Yeah. And all... Uh, it's usually a... a yeah. Not longer name cut down. Yeah. Simplified. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they're... That's a Swedish name. Um, they, uh... Yeah, the, the, now, my grandmother... On my mother's side now, understand? She come from Sweden. She did. Yeah, she come in here. She was the labor shipped into this country when they built the Santa Fe, and that's in Kansas where they started down there. Yeah. She was a pastry maker, cook. They didn't make nothing but breads and cookies mm -hmm. and pies. And of course, then my grandfather on my mother's side, he came from Ireland. He's full blooded Irish. Mm -hmm. See, she spoke about Swedes, and and uh, my grandmother was, and he was full about a Dutchman. And then she, my mother's mother, had been married before, and she, her first name was Johnson. C J O H N S O A, spelled just like yours. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. So that's sweet too. And they come into this country and migrated in labor camps and stuff, shipped them over here. Well, it's like my mom. My mom's name was, was Schaefer. What, what? Originally it was Schnellbecker. What? It went from Schnellbecker, German, uh, to Schaefer. Uh, Schaefer. They've been changed so many times. That's uh -huh. yeah. as far as we've gotten back with them. My family's problems are too lazy to do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. How the Schaefer spelled? S C H A E F E R. Uh huh. Spelled with an E. Just, just mm -hmm. the normal Schaefer. He Schaefer's here is S H A F F E R. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. I think on them papers, I, I don't know. It's my first wife's writing. It was in them records there. I said to you, I probably you noticed it in there where they, her birthday and my birthday. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. That's the reason I know when Rudy was born, see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He said he was 89 when he died. Uh, or 98 or something. I don't know what the hell it well, was. I think 80, 89 would be about right. That's yeah, well, told, that's what he said. He told me. That ain't right. Frida, he was born in 1904. He was. Rudy was, yeah. See. Well, I got the family record here mm -hmm. somewhere. I don't know how that got in them papers there that I sent you. I don't know how that was left in there. It didn't make any difference anyway. Yeah, well, I've got but, copies of all of them. Uh, you copied it all down. Yeah. What did you, uh, now you see, I told you that the railroad run directly in that house. Well, according to that map, it don't. It run through the barn. It run through <coughs> the damn barn, wasn't it? Yeah, the, barn the house set. was on the opposite corner. Yeah, well that house, according to that map, that's right in front of your place there, the old, old church, don't it? No, I think it's a block over, block west. Uh -huh. It was block 17, I believe it was. I believe it was over there in Pat's <coughs> barn lot. I'll have to get a map of Mercyville and find and see for sure. But according to that map that he drew there, it seems like it would be a, right on the southwest corner of Mercyville, which the land that he owned, which would be about right for where the railroad went through. Well, now listen. Is this map here? That's not Mercyville, is it? Well, I think that map, damn it, is out here on the prairie. Where Dad moved to? Northwest quarter, the northwest quarter How about of 30. that description? Did that check out with Mercerville? Uh, 30. Yeah, but no, it don't. Uh -huh. It don't. That's 
if it's section 30 that would be six miles west of Mercyville so it has to be it has to be in Independence Township out east of town yeah oh, that's where it's at yeah you know now here's that road that comes in from Elmer and goes out here what to call them this right here uh, uh, Mallet Mm -hmm. Is that right? Gary, Gary Mallet, uh -huh. or his dad. Or... But looking back to this other map here. Now that one I've never been able to figure out just where it was. Oh. Unless this might have went with that contract they signed with Jeff Patrick. Yes, with this contract here. Yeah, yeah. And this mm -hmm. is sort of following the creek around. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, but getting back to this. Ain't there another map there somewhere? Another yeah. one there somewhere? Yeah, there's one. Yeah, there's one. Now here's the one that shows the barn and where his house was. Well, here's the railroad, isn't it? Yeah, that's the railroad. Well, this is east, isn't it? This be. Well, this be yeah, east. east. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. North. That's east. Mm -hmm. Say he's standing here in the road. This road here, north and south. Yeah. And this house, well, right over here, should be your little place, I thought. Yeah, it would be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is the south. This is the road that goes on to Elmer. Right? Yeah, this in here. Yeah. Huh. And this would have to be the the south. I can't think what the name of that street is. Middle this is Main Street, street and and uh, where Grandpa Johnson had his barber shop. It has to be right in there. Right in there. Right. And this is just across the road here from it, right in that yeah. corner. Well, right up here, then there used to be a two-room house. Yeah, that's where uh, Jim Carter lived. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And yeah. I ain't right sure, but what my folks didn't live there, my grandpa and grandpa. This is Mercyville then. Yeah, this is Mercyville. This is the aisle with you telling about <coughs> the aisle yeah, in like St. Hill, yeah. And actually, this is this was the line that they was going to go on when they went clear under the Santa Fe. Yeah. But what they did was come across this corner and put this Y in, mm -hmm. right in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> where. Well, well, you know that down. that pit, huh? Where's the creek then? If this the creek is, is about down in here. I thought your your, your mom's land was right there at the creek. Mm -hmm. Mother's land right here in this corner. Okay. Two lots right here. Right, the creek's over here then. Well, the creek comes down yeah. this way and yeah. flows this way. You know, that picture you've got in there taken at the front of the house, if you remember, it shows two buildings in the background. Yeah. And that there. has to be the old store buildings back there. Where is that picture? <laughs> background there and you may have to dust it off before you see it. Can you see it? Now, now that's a barn or right here. Mm -hmm. right there, right there. There's my sister out there. Yeah. Two of them. Both two of them. Yeah. That's two old and that's your dad. That's the buildings out behind it. And you know according to the records that I found this is where Fletcher's store was, right back there. Just just back of this. It would have been in this block right here. Well, it had been then where the bridge is. It had been in that little square right there, north of the bridge on the west side. No. Or, or this little Remember where the old depot said? It would yeah. have been northwest of there. Yeah. It's about, it's just south of where uh, Pat O'Toole's barn is now. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh -huh. just south of there. That, uh -huh. I'll bet you that that was Fletcher's it store could, there. Could have been. Yeah. yeah, according to this map and the way this is setting, you're looking at it about the same way here. Mm -hmm. And according to the what I found in the abstract office, that store set right here, and that's mm -hmm. got to be that store there. What does it say back there? 1930 35 catalog. 
Huh? From Crittenden and Eastman Company, Burlington, Iowa. It was sent to some, no, you can't read it. It's yes. Furniture Company, yeah. somebody Furniture Company. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, there is only a company, yeah. yeah, you can't make out what town it was. Now, what, another thing I don't understand on these damn papers. Now here, what would all them names be on there? I know all them people. Well, the only thing I can think of when I read them was that was people that was living in Mercyville at that time. Oh, I don't think so. You don't think mm -hmm. so? Mm-hmm. Three Thurmans. Well, I tell you where they live now. That's the reason I thought one of these damn maps is out yonder. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? Where well, I think there? that Section 30 map is out there because Mercyville's not in Section 30. No, I it's don't. It's in 36. Really, I don't know. Now this is Thurman. What is it? I three 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 Thurmans. Three Thurmans. Two Seenies. Pike. Pike. That's old Frank Pike. Here's old John Wiggins. Doggett, Doggett, Elliot, Elliot, Jim Elliot, Jim Robinson, Griffith, Griffith. Now, what's these names here? I know all them people. J. D. Robinson. That's Jim. George Griffith. Yeah. J. W. Wiggins. That's old John. Mm -hmm. W. H. Gross. Yeah. Pike. Pike. That's Frank Pike. That's Leonard's dad. F. A. Pike. Childress. And Childress, you got there. Childress. That's old Doc Goodsey's dad in law. Is it? Mm hmm. Old man Childress. And mm -hmm. he lived down in yonder. Just that'd be. The Childress place is where our lemons live. Oh. That's Childress place. Harvey Thurman. Harvey. He lived east to the old Ladderbury schoolhouse out there. I now, can't figure Ina, this. Ina Trot. Ina Trot. T O U G H T. F O U G H T. F O U G H T. Ina Fort. Well, I don't. Harvey Thurman. That, Harvey Thurman. That'd be Adrian's dad. Mm hmm. He's in the rest home for Plato. Um, I can't read that there. Some Thurman. Here's a J W Thurman. Mm hmm. A G T Elliot. That's George Elliot. Ernest Elliot's daddy. Yeah. Inside okay. of Barnesville. C. C. Cini. That's old Emmett. That's old yeah. Burch's daddy. C. E. Cini. Yeah. C. E. Uh, J. T. J. T. Or J. L. Robuck. Robnick. Robuck. Yeah. Yeah. Robuck. That's my old Robuck. Yeah. They lived over there in there by uh, by east, just a little east of Barnesville. Mm -hmm. That's something dogged. Mm -hmm. S. Dogged. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is Griffith here. It'd be uh, old Sam Griffith down here. Probably they didn't have his initials down yeah. here. And I can't figure why they're on there. I don't. There. I don't know either. I just when I first looked at them, I just figured they were people that lived. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But Go they wasn't. That. Go ahead. Just feel. Not. That's something I know about. Can I borrow this picture? Sure can. Well, that Tax is my back. Well, I'll bring it back about? because that's the only picture we've got of anything in Mercyville. Is that right? The only one. Well, I'll get a copy of it and bring it back up about the first week in March. Hang on, help you with it. I'm glad to do it. Oh, you want to look at that? Are these the taxes that you were talking about? Yeah. Under Virgil's, what are the land taxes and stuff? Land taxes, 30, 30 cents, cents for the year of 1896. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, damn it, Haney's come in down or hell ahead of that. Hell, I think I've been up there since. Well, in the, about 80. Well, no, the first one was in 1892. Well, all right, I'm getting back down in there. All right, now, you see. Hey, oh. uh, what, what this shows here is J.G. Haney. That's your dad. Yes, sir. What's his name? Jesse Grant. Jesse Grant, okay. But he, he didn't pay his taxes for 92, 3, 4, and 5, but he paid them all in 96. And for five years, his taxes was two dollars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's about how damn valuable that land is. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to remember that was before uh, the turn of the century. Uh, yeah, you 
Yeah, I'd be glad to let you have that picture. Yeah. Well, like back. I say, that's the only picture we found of anything in Mercyville. Mm -hmm. And we can locate that exactly. The color's been retouched or Yeah, yeah. that's just been painted, yeah. That's it's the camera, Jesse but Grant. The building doesn't look right. The color on the building. Jesse Grant ain't his name. Jesse Grant. Okay. Jesse Grant. John, John Grant, see? John and my boy. His yeah. middle name's Grant. He named after him. You had two sisters? Who, me? Well, okay, who are the, who are the two girls? Then my sisters. Okay. Then my two old ones. But my God, man, you're looking into time there. Well, I, I, I see that. I understand it, yeah. Well, every time something like this happens, I learn something else. Yeah. I can tell you about living in Kirkwood, Missouri, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's... You know, I've, so far I have spent damn near $200 getting copies of pictures for this book no, I wouldn't we're know. coming out with. I spent sixteen dollars this morning. Didn't figure the time at that, did you? No, that don't figure the time. Um, oh, it's it's something. Well, where your problem is now? There's many people that have died. Yeah. You know what you can't talk to. If uh, somebody had just thought to do this forty or fifty years ago. Yeah. He, now it'd be now, easy. Now, hell, there's a lot of old people alive oh, then. Good Lord, yeah. To take the Beehammers used to live up there. The Beehammer place there, in Mercyville. Mm -hmm. They had about two or three acres straight up the hill there where Jimmy's trailer is. Yeah. Back in behind them lots that go up the front yeah. part of the road there. And oh Lord, but it, 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 so many people just don't remember. Mm -mm. I never did find out who George Wiggins' wife's mother was. Did you ever find out? Mm -mm. I've never talked, never been up here to talk to anybody yet. Yeah, they, well, I don't know if anybody to talk to us old enough to know unless it be Daphne. Yeah, no I still, I've got that written down. If I ever get down and talk to right. Daphne, I'll find out. Yeah, it's, uh, it, uh, um, I'd like to know. I think it's Mathis, so. Think she's some kind of J.T. Mathis? Hmm. That. Think she's some kind of J.T. Mathis, yeah. Daphne's dad? Oh, yeah. Fact the matter is, she, Daphne's dad's brother would be her daddy. No. Yeah, I say her and Daphne are cousins. Yeah. See, that's her, her daddy would be brothers. Mm -hmm. see, what I said about the Zimmermans, did you? The old lady Zimmermans? Oh, yeah, I'll cut that out there. You I mean, all we're going to use this for. See, just sitting here talking, there's no way I can remember everything that was said. How about that? Well, it'll be on the tape, but I won't write anything about it. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's that's nobody's business. No, it ain't. No. Yes, uh, yes. Now I see. T.J. J.T. Mathis. Well, that'd be uh, that'd be that's Daphne's dad. My sure. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, did you ever see one of them? Summer Journal. 1909. Mm-hmm. There it is. Dale and Patterson. And that Dale and Patterson store down there, Dale had the groceries and whatnot on the lower level, and didn't the old Patterson have it up on that second level in the back of the store? I I don't know. I don't remember when Dale and Patterson was together, Gene. Yeah. I remember when they separated. Do you? Yeah. Well, I can only remember back in the early 30s when him and Dale had a store there. But well, uh, and Dale had a store, and so yeah. did Patterson. But uh, not when they, uh, Dale and Patterson here, uh, when they were partners. Yeah. See? Hey, Steve, go out and get that book that's laying in the front seat of the view. Tom Christmas. <coughs> See you around. That's the man the man built the buildings, wasn't it? Right. Where the beer joint is now. Mm-hmm.
Mm -hmm. Now, I, do you have, do you know where a Tom and Davis store was? <clears throat> I know at a later date it burnt down, and he moved from Elmer. He bought Clarity out in the, in the Ethel, uh -huh. and run that store over at Ethel for a while after he burned out. But I don't know where it was. No, I don't either. Don't don't check. She's got. You agree. Yeah. Now I've seen the old phone book. Where you could find the rest of this stuff at? No, oh, keep looking around, Grandma. Come up with it. There's nothing that the old shed is there still. Ah, uh, they could be. There's yeah. some, there's a couple of boxes of Grand, uh, Grandpa Johnson's old stuff up there in the shed. They might be even still more. I see if we want to get it out of here <coughs> before it gets warm. I got that old trunk painted up now all the way. You did. I got most of the tin repaired on it. Good. Here's old time Hutcher place right there. Yeah, right, right up little. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And watch this one. I don't church. know. I think uh, it's a church I, somewhere that that James Bailey... Wasn't that the Baptist moved. church where they remodeled it? I don't know. We didn't have Baptist church. didn't have the bell tower on the side of it, did it? It's always been the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah it did on the end and in the middle. Yeah. I think that's just a picture of, mm -hmm. of a church more. Mm -hmm. You know, I went up in there, there's been no reconstruction in the top of that church. Council Granger is over to play to their out of business. Yeah. They was right there with the bank. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, that used to be quite a place back in the 30s and 40s. There's old Louis W. Perry. Yep. It's always slivery bar. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to know who run the other livery barn in Elmer, up there where the uh, where the MFA old MFA building is now. What was that bank at? That's the bank at Elmer. Yeah, but where was it at? Right, right where it is now. They just that's the way it looked Where's at one time. Down. Yeah, yeah. Four I don't four have four it. I don't remember it really being up. Hmm. You don't? Now since well, I was coming up here, but it did look anything like that. Still did it? Yeah, it did. You'd like it. Boy, then I've never seen it then. It could have been torn down before you came up here. This part of the canopy, I put that on the bank down there, what's on there yeah, now. Yeah, I remember you. Uh, remember when this you did part that. ain't on, well, it might be over where you go in the door. This part is. That was yeah. a clinic, though, then, or the post office, too, then? The post office. Yeah, the post office moved there in 1930. I think. Yeah, it was. I think it was down for I even. Because I can remember when the post office was up there next to the restaurant. And I can remember the day that it was moved down to the bank there. Uh, let's see. The bank uh, building. That's after the <coughs> place Surabek moved the bank assets to the place. Oh, wouldn't that be in 32? 32. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the post office right in the middle of the block there one time. Yeah, right next to the restaurant. Yeah, right next to the restaurant. Still got the old letter hole in the door where yeah. you mail the letters in, too. E.I. Dunham, he's a man that owned all this land down here in the bottom. Mm -hmm. F. Smith, he's cashier at the bank. Yeah. They had a big job. They got $60 a month. Back then, it was good money, though, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, sixty dollars wasn't too bad. No, not then. <laughs> well, like well, you're talking no, about no, no. and crackers for ten cents. That was a lot of money back then, well, though. Wasn't it? Goddamn, I was yeah. shit. You was living in the muslin then. He had him. Um, old Lincoln had worked for him for years and years and years. He did. He had done him. Well, he lived over there where uh, Joe Bucktail and Irish Jew yeah. lived now, didn't he? Do you remember Ryerson that lived there? 
And Ed Dunham's brother? Mm -mm. Ed Dunham left, his brother come, and a man by the name of Ryerson lived there. Another married Fred E.I. Dunham's brother's daughter. Ryerson was his name. He was there in the 30s. You know, that's the oldest house within the city limits of Elmwood is still standing. That's what they were. Yeah, the house there. What did you say? Well, there were, uh, well, George Griffin's house, or where Joe Bucktell is now, there was a house sitting there in 1870. And I don't know whether it's part of the house that's there now or whether <clears throat> the old house was torn down and another one was built. You aren't confused there. You, uh, you knew there was a house set right on up the hill there from George Griffin Place. That's yeah. where Bucktail is. Mm -hmm. Now which house is that? That one down this road across the Yeah, right well, around the Gamble Street. No, there. Yeah, right across from uh, Van Loo. Van Loo. Oh, yeah. That's that old house? Yeah. Uh -huh. up on, kind of up on the yeah. hill there. Point. Well, you see what I was trying to do, I got this old 1870 atlas and was trying to locate the houses that had shown them with where the places are now. And it turned out pretty close to where Joe and Iris June's house is. Mm -hmm. However, it could have been the one back up on the ridge there where yeah. Fisher Williams used to live. Yeah, yeah. It is right in that area somewhere. Oh, that's why I was thinking, because maybe you might have got two places. Well, one or, one or two of the places. It's hard to, when you're, when you're trying to transpose a map, which is a half inch to the mile, a half inch equals a mile, it's pretty damn hard to locate them accurately. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he had done it with the man who got the first tractor in this country, wasn't he? I think that's right. I think I've seen an article about that. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. he was. He owned this land down here, this side of the bridge. Uh, and then he owned a lot more land over in there. Yeah, that's him. Yes, I remember. He was instrumental in all this drainage by go. Yeah. The Douglas Ditch. Mm -hmm. He's the man that got it up. In fact, the man that got it started. Dr. Gooch, that yeah, looks like him. That's where it is. He's the auctioneer. Last off of him there, don't savvy. Mm -hmm. Down Newton up there, I don't savvy him. Let's see, there will be no paper published next day of publication. Let's see, the Orphan Brothers, where in the hell? Oh, yeah. Well, there were the editors, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they were the editors. Dr. L. Gooch, it looks like him. His eyes don't look like him. Yeah. Eyes don't you can just about look at these old pictures and recognize Doc Gooch anywhere. That's where Harry and Hazel is. Yes, now. sir. Tell Fred. Yeah. Goody and Christie. Plato. Goody. That'd be old Phil's dad, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's Phil's dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Phil you, and Al, yeah. and another boy named Al. He mm -hmm. works for the highway department down in Jeff City now. Mm -hmm. Now that, that J.J. Barron there, I'd never heard of him before to run the meat market in Elmer. Don't register with me. Mm -hmm. Barron. Let's see. I wonder where in the hell that was located. I don't know. You know, one of these, uh, part of this stuff that I sent you here, there was a sort of a paradox here. There was two advertisements. Yes, I believe I've seen it in there when I read that. It says this was by C. E. Derry, and I never heard of him. It said, I have opened a butcher shop next to Drake's. We'll have it all, all kinds of fresh meat. And then right over here is a, an advertisement by Newton. It says, all call, calls answered promptly. The office, the first door west of Drake's. Hell, they surely wouldn't have been in the same building, would they? One says, the first door next to Drake's, west of Drake's. About upstairs. Yeah, it says I have no proper butcher shop next to Drake's. Why, damn it, wasn't he a building? 
the set between Drake's store and the corner building down here one time. Didn't old Jim Salisbury live there? Old Jim, the old photographer. Old Jim. photographer. And I he used he to did. take, I think, the house there. I just in faint memory, but he used to have that big old cover his head up with a big old veil when yeah. he took a picture. Yeah. Had a telescope outfit like that, a big camera. Yeah. That old Jim Salisbury, yeah. Yes, sir. That was Dan and Jim's dad. He was? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dan's mother, Mildred Majors over there, her daddy. Mm hmm. And Jim married Frank Buck's daughter. Mm -hmm. Edna. No, not Edna. Francis. Mm, no telephone, switchboard. You know, I wish I'd have bought that damn thing whenever Drake sold out. Who got it, I wonder? Some guy from Shelbina, well, who was a collector of old telephone, mm -hmm. telephones and telephone exchanges. Probably got a little nothing, didn't it? As I remember, it didn't bring hardly anything. Mm -hmm. There was an article about him in the Kansas City paper here about ten years ago about his collection of old telephones and telephone exchanges and switchboards and such as that. Mm. Well, this is Andy Lean here, isn't it? Yeah. And this is old Harm White. Old Harm, yeah. Mm. The old, old jeweler and gunsmith. He used to fix watches, you know. Yeah. I see Edgar Bailey married his daughter. One of the Woods boys over there, Watts boys married. Watts one boys of them. married Lillian. Yeah. And Edgar married Utopa. That's right. Utopa's still alive. And I wonder where she's living. Can't say. The hell she She's is. living down next to her. Whatever but coming to the, They had a boy. I see they had two boys. Two boys, Lilburn and Billy. That's right. Lilburn lives in Quincy and Billy lives, lives in Kansas City. Did he marry George Meeks' his daughter? Right, June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I talked to him here about oh, about a month ago on the phone. I was down in Kansas City and called him up. Yeah. We know no one who we think can repair a watch or clock more skillfully than R.D. White on the shirt. He was pretty good. Yeah, hell, I remember. Used to be play poker, goddamn him and old. Henry Thomas and Art Smith. Mm -hmm. was, I, just, I just wonder, is Emma Smith still alive? Yeah. She in a nursing home somewhere? Ah, she's with some of her folks. <coughs> or being up. I don't know where. Yeah. They just had one girl, didn't they? They didn't have any. Oh, they didn't? Uh-uh. Lafrida, you're thinking about. Yeah. She was by Art's first wife. Oh. Her and Art never had no children. Mm. And I believe Art's first wife was an Easley. I never did. I didn't know that. First mm. time I heard that. Well, that's right. I'm afraid she married a Hyatt. Yeah. Lives out there on J. Harley Hyatt. Yeah, Harley Hyatt. That's right. Yeah. Northside Square. McKim. The old yeah. dentist over there he used to be an old fellow over there. He was a rough old son of a bitch. Jerk your head off. What was his name? It was Santa Fe Dentist. Uh, was there you? Oh, since you mentioned it, it kind of rings a bell, but I can't think of his name. Yeah. I've heard people talk about him. With you. Yeah, Jay Green, McKenzie, contractor. And I wonder if that's old Jim McKenzie. I bet it is. I don't know, though. He was an artist. He was. Uh huh. From Atlanta. Huh? This guy was from Atlanta. Yeah, well, Jim McKenzie was. I bet because he married his sister. And they live south of Barnesville on the north, on the west side of the road. Would be, be called. And they had a daughter by the name of Alty. And, and, uh, 
Her and Ray Robinson used to go together. In fact, we finally went so long they got in trouble. Uh, I better be careful if I'm coming to end here. What the hell am I saying, man? Uh, Mackenzie, he was a chalk chalk man. Oh. Chalk chalk, he. I don't know whether it's J. Green Mackenzie. Well, sure. That's all. That's all. This J goes with a Mackenzie, don't it? Sure. Sure. Well, hell yeah. That's the name. Well, sure, Jim McKenzie. All right. He uh, used to come to Atterbury School when I was a kid, on uh, at uh, Christmas time, and have they had their pie suppers, and he drawed chalk, chalk talk. They yeah. Called. Drawed boy. Mm -hmm. He was funny good. I've seen him take his hazel and set it up there in a piece of paper about that wide. And I noticed. I remember one picture in common, or you know, mm -hmm. from the rest of them. He drawed, he drawed the fall year scene of the father in the shop and the pumpkins, you know, yeah. laying over the ground. He was talking while he was drawing. Mm -hmm. And when he started in there, he just started in like this. <laughs> right, yeah. like, and that damn picture, it would come right out, just come right out like that. He draw them shocks of fodder and the pumpkins <coughs> on the ground. He was talking while he was drawing it, you know, of what he was drawing. It looked like it was coming out. Jim McKenzie, yes, sir. You remember, I, I can remember sometime in the early 30s, it had to be around 34, when they had some artist come in here and he painted in oils. And it was up above the, uh, well, next to Virgil's there, before the building, the upstairs burned down, there was no lodge hall up there, I think. That's right, Doc Coots had his office up there, yeah, too. Yeah, and I think the, uh, uh, I think the town sponsored him, maybe. But anyhow, I still got six of those paintings that he made. They're about that long, I'd say about two foot long and about that wide, about that tall. And got a scene of two duck hunters and a forest fire and a snow scene. What was that? I can't remember, but hell, he painted them in a little of no time and sold them for a quarter piece. Yeah. Dad got six of them. Yeah. Where do you got them at? I never seen them. You never seen them? Next time we come down, I'll have to see them. I'd be no. interested about that. They're down behind the bar. But this says, yeah, this says here, contractor. Well, I never, well, he probably contracted the truth, probably. Oh, yeah. This chair, it's the same damn mine. I bet it is. Sure, I know it is. <laughs> yes. Well, well, he was sure an artist, and he was a good one. He he followed that. But that picture I remember by itself. He drawed several pictures, mm -hmm. winter scenes, and houses, and yeah. nature scenery, and animals, and everything else. I thought he was plenty good. Hey, I'll tell you what kind of looking guy he was. He had a long, straight nose. And slim. Yeah. Uh, um, I can be quiet. Let's see. Be quiet. Be quiet. That was a. Uh, 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 yeah, that's quite an Now here's something I'm going to give you because it's yours. I don't want to tell you where I got it, and I don't know how it got there. But when Thorny Peeler bought uh, Ruth and and uh, Ruth and Wayne's place over here, there was an old box of books up in the attic there from Frank Thomas's time, and I bought the whole box of books from Thorny for five bucks, and that book was in there. It's about business. We've got your name in it. Yeah, I remember it now. Do you? Now, how in the hell it got there, I don't know. Yeah. And that was in Freck's house, so yeah. yeah. But they was, they was a big box of books, it was about yeah. that big a square and yeah. about four feet <clears throat> tall. Well, uh, I'll tell you how that probably got there through John. Now, Big Ernie would come over here and he'd borrow a lot of my books down the room to him oh, to read. Would. And that's how this That's how it got there then. Yeah. And uh, 
He borrowed the book of the ti sinking of the Titanic, and I wouldn't took fifty dollars for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's getting to be pretty old, eighteen eighty nine. Oh, yeah, yeah. looking at the cover right there. Uh, he never did bring it home. Mm. It was held premium. Sinking of the Titanic. Uh -huh. That be well, I'll, I'll look in that. I'll look in that box of books I got and see if it's in there. Well, if it is, see. I'll bring it to All you. All right. And uh, it was that was James Jacob asked. Aster, you know, mm -hmm. they went down with that, and he was a millionaire. In fact, he built it. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, well, you look in that box. Yeah, book. they was probably 50 books in that box that I bought. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of damned old checks on the on my bank here. Hell, I don't know how many. Do you ever have any of them? Yeah, I got a few of I've got a hell of a bunch of them. I just took out a few of them. Maybe put it. Yeah. Murray. C.I. Robert O. Sugar. C.I. Murray was cashier. He signed most of them. Mm -hmm. Murray. Merchant Trust and Savings Bank. Bill Creamier down here. Did they milk and everything was, was sold out of there? It's milk and cheese. Mostly was cheese, there cheese a, factory. Okay. There's no milk bottles with that. Uh, hmm. They didn't sell milk. Well, Elmer Creamer well, Company was cheese maker. I don't know. I have an idea in there. I've got, oh, hell, I don't know. Two books of them. I wouldn't know hell they yeah. wrote yeah. in the well, beginning. You know, when they finally knocked down the old bank building, all those checks were up in the attic. And yeah. Everybody got a few of them. Yeah. I don't know how many I've got here. Yeah. I just picked out those because they were from 1911 to 1930. I thought maybe just in a centennial book might print one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody would imagine the way this town looks now to what it was back then. Oh, hell, it was a booming town back in the 10s and 20s. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of business going on here. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was a time when nobody had any cars and you couldn't get anywhere else. You'd on the railroad here. This was the center of business for the all probably ten miles around here. Yeah. Did you ever see one of them? When they came down? Mm -hmm. They're check. No, I guess it's checkbooks with mm -hmm. Take care of your checkbook. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Yeah, genuine leather. Yeah, then something. Well, I'm sure glad. Did you want to keep this? Or no, you? no. Hell, it's yeah, yours. I'll give it. it yeah, I give it to Wanda or somebody. Uh -huh. I just found that about two weeks ago, and I was looking down in. Well, the, you look in there and do that, that and see if he's got that sinking of the Titanic. Okay. Picture. Yeah, that's. I'll bet you had because. They borrow them damn books, they won't bring them home. Mm -hmm. I had another one on the Bible, the book of Ruth. See the Bible character. Yeah. Niece borrowed that four or five years ago. I never did bring it home. I asked her if I was going to and said, I never borrowed no book of you. Mm. I forgot it. Today. the hell out of me. I was out and had that out in the shop still in that box of books and I was just kind of thumbing through them seeing what the hell was there and there was Newton L. Haney's book. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I used to have a lot of when Arthur Drake, you know, one time they sold tailor made suits. Mm -hmm. I used to have a lot of the cloth and they still have it yet. Of the, what the suits were oh, made yeah. out of then mm -hmm. and what they are now. Damn it. Well, a quarter of an inch thick. They're better. Oh, yeah. They're very big well, and they would be, uh, yeah, Well, a man at that time, he just bought one suit in a lifetime anyhow. That's yeah. all he had. <laughs> uh, usually, a lot of them were blue serge suits and mm. they were hard finished suit and they yeah. pressed good. And, 
I've got a big book down to the house that Dad sort of kept as a scrapbook. It's about that wide and about that tall, and it was an old clothing salesman sample book to show what the cloth was like. And uh, he had ripped out all the cloth samples in there and pasted in advertising cards from the early 1900s, mm -hmm. from about 1900 to 1910. He's got hell of a no tell how many different advertising cards that the mm -hmm. people used to put out. Yeah. And I'm going to have that over here in the museum in September for the centennial. Mm -hmm. But it'll, it'll take you back all the candies, all the flour, all the beans, all the Anything you could think of was for sale, and these, mm -hmm. these wholesale houses would send out their cards to mm -hmm. the store. The only thing is, he glued them to the damn pages. If you could, if you could any way you could get them unglued, you could see on the back who they were sent to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he Hot air dryer. dryer. Huh? Hot air dryer, like a hair dryer. Hot air dryer might do it. We used to look for stuff like that. Hell, they probably, stuff. They probably 60 or 70 pages of this. Where's your bathroom at, uh, uh, Where's what? Bathroom. Outside, anyway. Outside, okay. <laughs> now, I, air figured, air I figured that. You I want some paper? Get no, some no, towel no. there. I just got a water plate. Yeah, I've got a bath. I don't have no That's indoor That's the only type to have. Just go out there anyway. Side of the house, you don't need to walk through the snow anywhere out there. Just take your piss or anything you want to. Air conditioning. My bad house. Yeah. You know, I had, uh, I was intending to put in water here. Well, I've got a pot out there. It would take a long run down. Mm -hmm. When the line was laid in and the rotor died, and I had a little more water than what I used. You don't need it. Yeah. You still got use it out of oil? Yeah, right down there. That worked well there, too. That pump's broke on that, but the other water is equally as good. That there yeah. well. See it over top of the cellar there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a good well there. I had it drilled. It's good water, too. John broke the pump. I told him I never would fix it. He, the rubbers had kind of wore out in it. And he give it a, got mad at it and give it a big slam like that and broke the top of it. I said, by God, you'll carry water from now on. <laughs> Yeah. Later years, I think he's been gone. Um, is your shelter there? Is it full of water? Oh, you? hell no. No, that's got a drain in it. Hell yeah. yeah. I guess you knew that this corner here, these first two lots, in 1890 was a brickyard trail. I'm on my place here? On your place. Mm -hmm. Could be. I dig up old bricks occasionally. Do you? Yeah. Out there, yeah. Well, See, I've got six lots here. Six mm -hmm. through to twelve. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And it's in block ten. And the first two lots had to put you up here or this side of the mulberry tree somewhere. Yeah. Or well, maybe up to this gate. The old, the old 1895 uh, map of Elmer, uh, well, it was printed in 1895, which means it was probably made about 1892 or three. Mm -hmm. Showed these those north lots there as, mm -hmm. as the brickyard for them. Mm -hmm. Well, that fence line, is that the old roadway there? Yeah. The old road I was thinking there. that brickyard was set across over there on the back end of the uh, but not, a, not according to the map. Well, I'm not probably correct on it. I'll get you a copy of that. Well, it don't make any difference. Uh, I, once in a while, when I used to make garden, I'd Dig up the brick. They'd plow up a brick, you know, and have mm -hmm. a garden plow. Maybe two or three of them, park brick. Yeah. They was all soft brick. All soft brick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I understand that all the brick, all the facing brick on these buildings would come out of St. Louis somewhere, and the inside brick for the second row was the old soft brick. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That came out from a uh, mm -hmm. old